Joining me now on Telecom TV is Timon Sloan, who is Head of Ecosystem and Marketing at the ONF. Timon, thanks for joining us on, on Telecom TV. You're joining us from uh, Menlo Park in, in California. Um, That's right. Can, you, can we start, be, be, before we start talking about um, the ONF Connect event, which has just concluded, can we um, look at the objectives of the ONF and why the foundation was created by CSPs in the first place? So, you know, the ONF was created by a set of uh, operators and forward-leaning companies that really wanted to drive transformation in the networking industry. Um, this is a period of time around 2011 when there was a lot of uh, ossification in the industry. As, as, uh, as we view it, uh, you know, there, a huge amount of consolidation had taken place. The number of vendors um, that were still available and, and serving the operators had uh, shrunk to maybe three or four. Uh, the, even the number of operators had shrunk. And so the consolidation across the industry had really slowed innovation and, uh, and, and really minimized or eliminated choice for operators. And operators were also finding that uh, they were becoming locked in and beholden to a vendor. Once they selected a vendor, um, you know, they were had to sort of roll out at the uh, at the vendor's timeline and with the vendor's roadmap over the, the many years to come. So one of the highlights for me from ONF Connect last week was the uh, report from Arthur D. Little, which also had input from, from AT&T, Telefonica and Deutsche Telekom. Um, it's all about this idea of a, a, a central office pod, if you like, uh, units that, that can be replicated uh, across the edge network. Uh, fascinating idea. Uh, how did it go down with the members? So I think so far uh, that report has, um, and people are still trying to digest. I mean, there's quite a lot in that report. It's an amazing report. Uh, you know, we, I, I saw it um, for the first time just recently as well. So this was done independently by them, but we are um, you know, quite pleased, really thrilled that they've spent the time and energy uh, it's a 55, 60 page report, as I recall, uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's very meaty and there's uh, quite a lot of value in there. So I think it's amazing that these operators have stepped up to, to share the level of, of uh, detail to disclose uh, their internal motivations, their techniques for uh, building out both the technology, but even culturally what's needed to drive transformation in operators. Uh, and then even get into things like the CapEx and OpEx savings and the resulting uh, incremental revenue that one can achieve with this, with this model moving forward. It's really an, an amazing piece of work and I think um, it's uh, going to have uh, huge ramifications for the industry, I suspect. Because all, all this is about the continuing transformation of, of the industry, and the industry has been going through virtualization with, with NFV, and it continues to be a steep learning curve for everyone concerned, maybe taking far longer than we originally thought. But as telcos express this desire to uh, adopt cloud-native methodologies and technologies, to stay competitive. Um, how do we as an industry and how do organizations such as the ONF, how do they help to make this next transformation perhaps less painful and easier? Well, we've learned a lot from the, the NFV journey that we've been on. Uh, you know, I think that, uh, I, I think uh, probably everybody in this audience understands that NFV, the approach taken was to take all the software running on a fixed function, big um, in, sort of embedded box, and put it on an x86 server. And that, uh, that really didn't yield the benefits that one had hoped at the beginning. Uh, you know, and the cloud operators uh, really have charted the path here that, uh, that the telcos are trying to emulate and how you use uh, really a commodity infrastructure, not just a server, but a huge pool of resources and build applications in a way that can dynamically um, you know, scale out and take advantage of that pool of resources in a, in a dynamic, what's now known as a cloud native way. And that's completely different than NFV. It's a different journey. Now, one of the announcements last week from the ONF itself was that you've, you've made the Stratum Switch OS um, project available as open source now, freely available as open source. What implications will that have for the industry? So Stratum is part of uh, the ONF's next generation SDN work. And you know, the, the SDN came out of, uh, out of the ONF. The ONF has, has been driving that work from the beginning. And that's the foundation of everything that we do. And really what we're doing is we're reassessing and then rebuilding the foundation while, while we're in flight. Uh, so it's an interesting process. But uh, you know, we've kind of recognized that um, you know, the, that first um, pass at, at SDN which was based on open flow and separation of the control and data plane had uh, significant benefits. 
Uh, I mean, so much so that Comcast just announced a, a deployment at scale that uses all that technology. So it's it's not like it's um, by any means not had a, a, a huge impact on the industry. But we believe now there's more we can do. And so going back and looking at the problem, we recognize that you could one uh, number number one do full lifecycle management of a box, not just uh, control the individual flows of uh, traffic, but be able to you know from uh, cradle to grave, uh, bring a box up, swap a box out, uh, take it through its life cycle and and shut it down. Plus being able to fully program the network in ways never before possible, much like we can fully program an x86 uh, computer. And you know we believe that uh, as that becomes possible, which it is now, uh, and available, which we're making uh, possible, uh, that's going to have huge ramifications for the industry. That uh, application developers can, for the first time, really use the network as a tool and use their creativity to push functionality into the network uh, in ways never ever before possible. So Stratum's a key part of that. And another. ONF project that's seen uh, commercialization is Trellis, because now uh, at and is deploying Trellis in its network. That's right, yeah. So Trellis is a, a fabric. It's originally designed for data centers to build a spine leaf fabric, but purely on white box switches and where all the intelligence is moved into the cloud in a cloud native way. And, uh, and over time, uh, Tr Trellis's um, application or footprint has extended and it's now being used by operators uh, for access and edge networks. So instead of building a data center just in a building, imagine you can build effectively a distributed data center. You can build a multi-tier spine leaf fabric that goes all the way out from the access and into the edge and connects all your compute uh, at your edge and access sites all in a very dynamic way. And that's uh, what Trellis is and that's uh, you know, how, how uh, Trellis is being used by Comcast. Now, these are projects that, that use open source and uh, that have been led and initiated by the, the operator telco community. How, how, how does that go down with, with the developers? How, how receptive are they to the fact that it's, it's a, a key number of CSPs that are, are kind of dictating where development should go? Well, you know, in my experience, uh, developers love for their work to be used and have an impact. And that's one of the most important things. And, uh, you know, and if one... Uh, implements and builds things in isolation and then, you know, build it and then you hope you find a market for it. Um, it often can be quite challenging. We take a completely opposite approach, which is we work hand in hand with the operators from day one. Uh, the operators help drive and, and, uh, and specify direction. Uh, and therefore, we know that it's going to be consumed. And not just that, it's being consumed all along the way. Even in its early prototypes, the operators are working hand in hand with uh, the entire community. So that really changes the dynamic. And uh, in my experience, the developers are really excited about that and are, are absolutely thrilled and excited about the impact uh, that we and the, and the broader community is having. Now, we're in an agile and dynamic world, or at least the telcos hope they're in an agile and dynamic world. What, what's, what's coming up in the next 12 months? What, what's the ONF and its members working on and developing now? Well, we almost have, you might think of it as sort of two major tracks. And so one is uh, driving uh, much of our work to, to production. You know, you heard the recent uh, Comcast announcement. That's very exciting to have them finally be able to sp uh, speak publicly. You know, this is years in the making. You know how operators work and how much time it takes to, to get to this point. Um, you know, we have the same kind of thing going on with a project called SEBA, SD Enabled Broadband Access. That actually builds on everything we've talked about, including on top of Trellis, to build uh, for access networks a, a virtualized cloud native environment where white box uh, PON equipment, OLTs, can be used, uh, but to deploy in a much more nimble and vendor neutral fashion. And we at this point have uh, you know, three of our partner operators that are um, you know, committed in taking it to uh, production, and that's AT&T, Deutsche Telekom, and Turk Telekom. Uh, plus, there are uh, additional operators. I know of at least another 10 operators worldwide that are uh, you know, active in SEBA. So it's a, a very, very successful project. Uh, it's having a, already a, a huge and broad impact. And, uh, and the operators I've mentioned have all committed uh, to having it uh, in production in the 2020 timeframe. Uh, and one has even talked about having um, you know, maybe at the very end of uh, 2019, having uh, early production up. So you know, it's very close, it's eminent. Uh, the community's working together in a really interesting collaborative way, but um, hard and fast. So that's a whole you know, take it to production kind of uh, track for ONF. The other track over the next year is around the next gen SDN, which I touched on earlier with Stratum. 
So we have the Stratum initiative, which is a thin switch OS to run on a white box uh, using P4, P4 runtime and all these new next generation um, interfaces. Plus we're doing um, you know, an upgrade and a revision of the SDN controller, uh, Onos, which is uh, really the first project that started this all. Uh, and now uh, it's kind of morphing into something called Micro Onos, which is connected to microservices and cloud native. Uh, breaking it into very small micro components that can can run in a very cloud native way um, and leverage all these next generation SDN interfaces we touched on and uh, and open up and enable that full programmability of the network that uh, is going to ultimately allow the application developers to do new and innovative things that have, have never before been possible. Well, we look forward to seeing the results next year, but for now, Timon, thank you very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.